So this is looking at thin film interference. And thin film interference is when we have uh, the result of two reflections that are gonna occur from a thin film. Uh, this is gonna be our incident ray here. It's gonna hit the boundary here and it's gonna create reflection one. Some of it is going to go into the film and it's gonna hit this boundary here which is gonna create reflection two. And what can happen is uh, this angle that is provided is, is just shown to see the difference and it is um, much larger than what would actually be happening. But what we can say is that there's a path-like difference of delta x between ray one and ray two. So ray one is just gonna travel this length here. Ray two in total is gonna travel this thickness plus another thickness and then equidistant as ray one. So there's a path leg difference between ray one and ray two, which is this highlighted region here. So what we can say is the path length difference is equal to two times the thickness of my thin film. Now, what's gonna happen is constructive interference is gonna occur if this path leg difference is an integer of the wavelength of the light. So if this is one wavelength difference or one wavelength in length, then that's gonna be constructive. If it's two wavelengths, three, four, and five wavelengths, those are all gonna be constructive situations. If it's destructive, this path length difference would be a half wavelength or some integer multiplier of one half of a wavelength. So one half, one and a half, two and a half, or so forth. A side note is that the wavelength which we're referring to is not the wavelength of the original incident light. However, it is the wavelength which that light is going to uh, convert to when it is in the thin film. Because it has a new index of refraction, the wavelength will increase or decrease depending upon how the index of refractions of A and B compare. Remember that the frequency of the light is going to stay the same. However, because velocity of the light is frequency times wavelength, the frequency then is wavelength divided by velocity. So what we can see is the wavelength that's going to be produced in B is going to equal the ratio of velocity b over velocity a times the wavelength of a. So you need that original wavelength, but we need to understand that we need to convert it based on their velocities and how they compare, or the ratio that they produce. So this wavelength here is referring to the adjusted wavelength when the light is within this thin film. The other thing that's gonna change is if we have one that is inverted. An inverted light So the inverted reflection occurs when in B, or the light which it's going to reflect off of, is greater than the light which it is coming from. So bouncing off a boundary that slows down the light is going to cause an inverted reflection. So these characteristics are going to change if one of the rays is inverted and only one. If they are both inverted, it acts as if neither of them are inverted. 
So again, some things that we need to pay attention to. How are things constructive and destructive? Constructive would be exactly an integer of wavelengths, whereas destructive would be a half wavelength integer. We're going to switch this if one of the rays is inverted, and that happens based upon how the light reflects off. And this path length difference is going to equal to two times the thickness of my film. And we need to understand that when we're doing these equations, the wavelength which we're using in these for the measurements is the wavelength that is found in the film and not the original wavelength, which would be right here.